Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be walking through Cisco Packet Tracer 10.1.3.3. This is titled Configuring DHCP version 4 using Cisco IOS. To begin, we'll go ahead and open up our Packet Tracer activity, give it a quick reset, and make sure we start fresh. And we'll go over a little bit of the background of the scenario here. Um, so a dedicated DHCP server is scalable and relatively easy to manage, but can be costly to have one at every location in a network. However, a Cisco router can be configured to provide DHCP services without the need for a dedicated server. Um, Cisco routers use the Cisco IOS feature set EasyIP as an optional full-featured DHCP server and EasyIP leases configurations for 24 hours by default, but that can be changed. As the network technician for your company, in this scenario, we have been asked to configure a Cisco router for a DHCP server to provide dynamic allocation of addresses to clients on the network. We are also required to configure the Edge router as a DHCP client so that it receives an IP address from the Internet Service Provider's network. So there's a little bit of work to do in here. We need to first set up a router as a DHCP server, and then we need to configure DHCP relay, then configure a router as a DHCP client, and then verify our DHCP and connectivity. All right, so to begin, let's start in router two. And this is one that's gonna be both a server and a client. All right, and to begin, we want to exclude the first 10 addresses from the R1 and the R3 local area networks. Um, it's always good to have at least a few IP addresses reserved for static devices in case you decide you do want to put servers in or if you want to have static IP addresses for your printers or other services like that. Um, so we have the 192.168.10.0 network, and we'll reserve the first IP addresses here with the slash 24 notation. The other network is 192.168.30.0, again, slash 24. So using those two network addresses, we're going to reserve the first 10 IP addresses there. So we want to come up to the global configuration mode in router 2 and give the IP DHCP excluded address the beginning, the first address, 192.168.10.1, and the last address, 10.10. So this will exclude everything in this range. Then we want to do the exact same thing for the 192.168.30.0 network. So we were, we've reserved the first 10 IP addresses for specific devices later. We can set them statically. Next, we want to create a DHCP pool. So let's start with the R1 LAN. We'll start here with this network. There we go. And this pool is going to come from this network. And the subnet mask. We then need to also inform that network what its default router will be, which should be the 192.168.10.1, which is a router's one, router one's um, G00 interface which is the interface connected down towards that network. So that way it has a default router. We also want to go ahead and give it a DNS server at 192.168.20.254, which we get from our addressing table here. So this has been assigned to the DNS server which is actually located over here. Okay. Um, so that sets up 
DHCP for the R1 LAN. Next we need to set up DHCP for the R3 LAN. Just coming off to this network off router 3. So we'll go ahead and get back to our global configuration mode. And want to set up the DHCP pool for the R3 LAN. using the network address and subnet mask set up the default router which is here and again setting the DNS server So we have those set up, should be sitting about 50% completion. Our next step is to configure DHCP relay. And we're going to do this on routers 1 and 3. So let's start in router 1. We want to go into the interface first, which is G00. So there we go. G00. We want to give it the command that it has an IP helper address of 10.1.1.2. Which is the serial connection for router 2 that leads up to router 1. Alright, then we want to do the same thing on router 3, giving it the helper address coming up here to router 2. IP helper address command simply states that when R1 gets a DHCP request from a client on this network, if it can't hand out a DHCP address, it can contact through this IP address, it can contact R2 and ask for a DHCP address for that client. Same thing for R3. If it can't assign a DHCP address, then it can contact R2 to request an address for that client. Um, next, we want to set up PC1 and PC2 to receive DHCP addresses. So we'll come into the IP configuration for PC1, and we'll just tell it DHCP. We give it a moment, and it will request and receive a DHCP address. And we'll do the same thing for PC2. That way it is receiving a DHCP IPv4 address. Um, with those completed, went up to about 90%. Um, each PC receiving a DHCP address is about 15% of your total completion. So there's 30% total just getting those set up. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to set up R2 as a DHCP client so it can re receive an IP address from the internet service provider in order to provide internet access for all of these networks. So we want to jump into router 2. And this sounds really complicated, but it's actually really simple. So we want to come back to the global configuration mode. And we want to go into G01, which is leading out to that internet, ISP, G01. and we want to give it the command IP address DHCP and just for good measure give it a no shut command make sure it's online and momentarily it should receive a DHCP address from the internet service provider so we want to go ahead and verify that 
we'll go ahead and give it a show IP interface brief command. And we see here that it's unassigned, but it should be picking up DHCP. So it hasn't quite gotten it completed yet. We're going to go ahead and fast forward time just a couple of minutes. It really shouldn't take that long but it may take a little while depending on the internet service provider if you're setting this up in real life sometimes that could take 24 hours so you never know and then we issue the command again and we see that it has received a DHCP address from the ISP so it hadn't received one immediately but just by going forward in time a little bit we picked up this address from our internet service provider the next thing we want to go ahead and do is to verify DHCP bindings. So we give the command show IP DHCP binding. And here we have PC1 and PC2 here and here. Both of those IP addresses have been recorded in our router with their MAC addresses, showing that this router has assigned this IP address and this IP address out to clients. And then the last thing that we want to do is we want to verify that our PCs can ping everywhere around this network, including to the internet. We're just going to get started going PC to PC, and note that your first attempt to ping will probably fail across devices as it sets up the correct routing tables for everything. So I like to run through and just ping like crazy across everything, make sure that I get my first one set up for all my devices and then I'll go through and verify that I have actual connectivity. If you're doing an actual ping command from the command prompt, that sends out four packets, so your first one will fail, your following three should all succeed. Um, the simple PDU only sends a single packet, and that single packet is lost or dropped when the routing table is created. So it gets used to create the routing table and there's no follow-up to make sure that we have success. Um, anyway, so you can ping across from each device, PC1, to the DNS server, to the Cisco.com, and to PublicSite.com. And do the same thing for PC2. Go to the server, go to Cisco.com, go to PublicSite.com. And then lastly, make sure that PCs can ping each other. Everything should have communication across this entire network. And that'll bring your completion up to 100%. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And hopefully I'll see you in my next video.